go. No. Double nickels. No, you can't do that. Same age. This is very radio. Same age as Mel Gibson. Welcome in. Welcome in. Bienvenidos. Konnichiwa. Aloha and hello. You are now listening. This is DOS Process, the show wherein we examine how who it is, the show wherein we <laughs> examine how it is that who we are Come on, becomes what we do. And yeah, that one too. We like to keep it loose here on the show, even when we do the tighten up. <laughs> <laughs> it is our privilege to bring you talk, neither shock nor jock, taking flight outside the flock, and you do us the favor of lending your ear. It is here where we pry apart the clam to break the pearl back down to sand, and it's your patroness, patronage that actualizes our plan. When monkey see and monkey do's, Das Process goes ape in search of the clues. An hour of recorded dialogue covering the ass, the bumping, and the frog. Let's meet the crows that make up this murder, shall we? I'm your host, Mac Aston, and I'm joined in the studio, as always, by the heckle to my jackal, longtime member of several shortlists, Mike Fasolo. Mike, when was the last time you forgot how to remember? I forgot. To Mike's right and left of center <laughs> is chief engineer and American hero, Colin Crump. Colin? Yes, <laughs> I'm doing really good. <laughs> my name is Colin Crump. <laughs> I've been doing a fantastic <laughs> job. Uh... Editing and mixing and doing the camera stuff. Thank you. We've been too busy to hook up his mic. <laughs> That's the honest truth. Yeah, fair enough. We broadcast each fortnight just down the street from an undisclosed location, and that location is a product of our producer's vocation. This is a man who works hard for his money, so you better treat him right. Rick Larder. How you doing, Mac? Rick, do you know why the caged bird sings? <laughs> um, I would imagine because it longs to be outside. Oh, Rick! Do you oh, know? That's who a heartfelt <laughs> answer. That was good. Do you do you know who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? Uh, I would imagine uh, birds. <laughs> <laughs> Her husband. She's the one that has all the birds caged. <laughs> Maybe that's why the wolf is after the birds. Ah. That's why they sing. And that brings <laughs> us to the man who made Das Process what it is today: executive producer and sommelier to the stars, the Ayatollah of rock and roll, Dan Levy. Dan, what hey. are words for? Ooh. Words are for painting pictures. Pictures uh, of sound? Pictures of whatever you would like. Fair words enough. are good, and you're a wordsmith. Oh. I look up to your, the more way you use your words. <laughs> more of a word, more of a word Johnson, really, <laughs> when my elocution gets in the way. <laughs> a word dick. Scratch the surface of today's guest, and you'll find underneath the makings of a true artist, a modern philosopher poet, a ribald raconteur, and an able observer of the light that shines upon and within us all. He's a celebrated playwright, an accomplished essayist, a globetrotting stand-up comedian, and an actor with the uncanny ability to craft indelible performances with roles in which other performers might easily be forgotten. Have a gander at his IMDb page if you've got 45 minutes to spare, because the list is long and distinguished. His film credits include, but are not limited to, comedy classics Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Johnny Dangerously, Better Off Dead, and Punchline. His turn as Milo in 1991's The Last Boy Scout put the sin in sinister. His television credits are far too num numerous to mention, though I will pick out a few later in the show. Please, find yourself a comfortable spot and allow yourself along for a beautiful ride. We've got a man, a myth, a legend in the house. Please welcome Taylor Negron. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you yeah. so much. You know, I was listening to that, and so I thought really you were young. going to bring on Joe Paterno. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 He went there immediately. Oh. No, it's always very nice to hear your uh, your credits uh, told by uh, an another angle, especially somebody like, you're like Nabokovian the way you write. <laughs> I'll be honest. You, it's very nice the way you write. Oh, I cheers, love that. Cheers, I cheers. would also like to, like, I would like to cover that material that you just wrote. Well, go on then. I mean, maybe later I would like to just, because it's really well written. Well, cheers, 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 cheers. Thank you. I, I, I feel as though we may have a kinship there. I, uh, I spent some time last night and this morning uh, looking over some of your essays, uh, which were new to me. I didn't, uh, I didn't know that that was, was there, and I'm glad that I took a look, because there's a couple turns of phrase that are really fucking fantastic, and I, uh, I might just throw them at you. The f the, my favorite one is, um, and words came out of Menno's mouth like, 
tight pine cones. Mm. Isn't that great? Yeah. Is that you? I wrote that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm into words, man. Wow. Menos. So are you. Who's Menos? Meno was my best friend, Menno. our best friend. Very That's good. A cool name. Very good. He was from Dutch. Uh, he was Dutch Indonesian, and he uh, he looked like a, a H and R Puffin stuff character. <laughs> 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 he was very, very deep and very uh, filled with melancholia. And one day we were hiking in the Angeles Crest Forest, and we fell off the cliff. Ooh. And we were going down about like 50 miles an hour, just we could grabbing onto the twigs. And he looked at me very calmly and said, it's so sheer. <laughs> I mean, he was able to observe yes, in the yes. middle of it. Presence of mind. I thought that was great. Unbelievable. When did you start riding? As a, uh, as a wee one? Um, Has it always been something that you sort of felt uh, good about? You know, I remember g being an artist, you know, and drawing when I was a kid in school and stuff. And then sometimes I didn't have my art supplies with me and I wanted to write. Because it was like painting, another form of painting. Indeed. I think that, I, and I always had, I keep a lot of journals, so the journals were always writing and uh, uh, drawing together. And a different what uh, kind of journal do you keep? Uh, uh, like, phys like, what kind of journal is it? Physically? I go to uh, Paris once a year and I get them in the Saint-Hilaire in front of the Louvre. Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, they're and they're really good paper. You could draw in them and write in them and they don't smudge and they have power to them. And you Leather bound? Or no, 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 they're just canvas. I yeah. have well, I, I'll show it to you. Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm I'm real particular in how I write, and I, it always starts on the page for me. And I've been a just a composition book kind of guy, but I've you know the composition book has a line. Yeah, you got to yeah. go out of the line. Yeah, I think hmm. I think I'm. Do ready you know what to I'm doing now with all my journals? Is I'm going back to ones that are ten years old and just start working them again. Interesting. Nice. Uh, changing any of the words or just uh, picking up changing, where you left taking off? Taking the words out. Taking the words like, out. That's I understand how Hemingway would do it. He would he would go back and, and, and take out the... Every day he would go uh, as far in the manuscript that he was working on. He'd fuck the words out. <laughs> yes, he would. Yes, he would. <laughs> he would fuck them right out. <laughs> He'd fuck those words out. <laughs> no, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think that sometimes what you wrote is a, a, a kind of a road map and then you don't need the map anymore. Right. Interesting. So you can throw it away. You're already here. Sure. I don't know how to get to... I know how to get to chat. <laughs> <laughs> now I know it's still uh, slightly undisclosed <laughs> did you uh, think that this was a really ghetto area it seemed like you were kind of surprised like it's kind of quiet in this area the valley you know what? I'm from uh, uh, Pasadena. Oh, okay. So we consider this the slums. No, <laughs> it, I kind of consider it the slums. I mean, to be honest, I mean, I, at this point, I have to be honest, this was very frightening. <laughs> really? No, no, because wow. I mean, if, if we if we couldn't see a tennis court, we got nervous. <laughs> oh, exactly. The bike but path. Yeah, uh, you know what I'm talking no, about. No, yes, there's a, there's a quote from uh, the biography on your website. Glendale was so boring, it made Burbank seem like Berlin in the early 30s. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Have you uh, always lived in Los Angeles? Yeah. Uh, or in the greater Los Angeles mm -hmm. area? I've actually, uh, my whole life, been more than, no more than a mile off Sunset. No kidding. Wow. Yeah, which is really frustrating. <laughs> sure, <laughs> with the traffic. <laughs> no, the, yeah, I mean, I want to see new things. That's why I'm living in New York. That's why I live in France. It's, it's you know, it, you want to go on from, uh, I've been here forever, it seems. What do you think it is about this place that keeps bringing it back? Probably that you can kind of daydream here a lot mm. because the windows are really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's all there's, you're very happy kind of, oh, I'll look out that window for sure. an hour or two. Oh, man, I know that. It's, and in New York, it's like, oh, <laughs> you can only like, God, I <laughs> count the brick wall so many times. Well, no, in my building, you look out at a brick wall and then uh, this is, of course, I get the view, a hoarder mm. <laughs> that has, you know, the magazines with the, you know, Manson in them. <laughs> It's frightening. Wait, there was uh, that sounds like a, a neighbor my wife and I used to have back in Baltimore. There was uh, the hoarder with the magazines. They came in to, to change the air conditioning unit at one point, and the guy literally Ooh. had to carve a path through the stacks. So many Time Life magazines. But I, I mean, I love my dad anyway. He's a, <laughs> he's a, he's a nice guy. You just got to kick a couple dead cats out of the way. It's all good. That's terrible. Now, now, your dad is Gomez. Yes, yes. John Aston, the one. Uh, the I mean, y he's Gomez. Yeah. He's so great. It's 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 been good fortune. It's it's funny. The uh, a guest we had previously is is the fellow that played. Uh, it was the actor that played the character Jar Jar Binks, which uh, was in the the, uh, the Star Wars films and and was a very polarizing character. And we were a little worried uh, when he was coming in if if we could uh, actually talk about it. And it reminded me a bit of uh, mm -hmm. the way people talk to my dad because Gomez was maybe not polarizing, but uh, it's what he's known for, and mm -hmm. that's that's pretty much how it, it has stayed. And he has such a great attitude. Is he okay? With that? Oh, he's fantastic. Yeah. I had the opportunity many years ago to work with uh, David Ogden Stiers, and he doesn't want to be Winchester anymore. Yeah. He's been Winchester long enough. And, 
you know, it's a, it's a different it's a different take. Um, but I've accepted my pizza man status. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a couple of them, but I mean, yeah, I, I totally have. And and if you don't, then you're really alienated. Agreed. Yeah, you have to accept that. And uh, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm Do gonna you? geek out for a second. I want to be a fan. Yeah. But it's what's amazing to me is that there were there were there were parts of you know my early teens where I, I would call friends and repeat lines of your dialogue <laughs> to make them laugh. Are you kidding me? The it's mailman fantastic. in Better Off Dead, <laughs> dude. The, w- yeah. My sister and I used God, to just hold so that in such high. R- we fixated on that character for some reason because it was just like genius shoving the mail back into the, <laughs> the package. The the you're and walking and a, like you just don't a piece give of a mail falls <laughs> off. Yeah. You, you don't give a going. fuck about <laughs> it. Like it's just so classic of like. But I think it was because it, it touched the stoner inside me, you sure. know, because it's that guy that's like, hey, Badger, here's your book on how to pick up trashy women. You know, so it's just a little boy it, like you. It killed me. Big boy smut like You know where that line came? I wrote that line. Thank oh, you. That's, that's what awesome. I wanted to know. That was from, that was, it came from your, yourself, yeah? Well, yeah, because I, I like Mae West. And oh. she, you know, it's like, uh, it's like a Mae West line. You're a like, what, what, what is a big boy? What's it, what is it? The line? Uh, uh, what's a big boy like? like you? Do, yeah, you, a big boy with, uh, like you doing. What's a, li- a what's a little kid like you doing with big boy smut like this? <laughs> right, oh. that's, <laughs> such a good line. You know, and it's just like the build that that that, that insane kind of vaudeville, old fashioned right. Bowery. Like you should you should get into that. Learn about those people at the turn of the century. What those. Bowery Street boys would say. Copy that, yes, sir. You know, and go in there and you know, like, uh, I want to let you all know if you do get into a fight. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you all, that, all that stuff that you could say right and now. And work it back into the lexicon and and to see if it flies. Yeah, I was talking to Jackie Beat last night, and he uh, he was telling me he's a great performer and singer that he's been talking like bringing words back, like oh. Joan Crawford words. Beautiful. And like you know, like I will say, like we should all get together and have luncheon. <laughs> and if you say that's the proper way of saying it, have luncheon. Well, have luncheon. You have to have an accent. You can just, you know, we, we, uh, Christine and I had a big long luncheon today. And then you could add boozy. I like We had boozy. a big boozy lunch. <laughs> 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 and then you say that, and people are like, what? Wow. What? I there's go, yeah, we had lunch. There's something going on, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It makes it, uh, it dresses it up. But we, it's, we're responsible to do that now because we, we, ha- we can explore Webster's dictionary, we could Google any word, you mm-hmm. can Google a number. I know about it. <laughs> oh, I'm Googling numbers when I get home. <laughs> oh, I, I Google all my addresses for potential apartments. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, if 115 West 82nd Street is uh, hope and change. <laughs> hope and change? <laughs> I mean, I swear to God, it's a hope and change. I go, okay, I'll take that apart. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. Sold America. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Hey, uh, one, three, two means absolute heroin addiction. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Whoa. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta stay away from the one, three, two. <laughs> gotta find those addresses and keep a secret. So I you need to move. <laughs> you're, fr- you're from Glendale originally. Yeah. I'm uh, from Echo Park, Echo Park, California. Born and raised here. My parents came from New York to be uh, to get away from um, the insanity. Mm-hmm. And they d- ch- chose the sub. <laughs> they established some of their very own right out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, they were running away from you know stabbings. Okay. You know, in the Bronx. Sure. They were yeah. very rough. My, I was raised in a rough New York way. Like during the Manson murders, my mom said, you better uh, close all these windows and doors. I don't want these hippies to come in here and de-gut you. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's an option? <laughs> Is that like, that's an option. Okay, you said the option. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so it's like th- that very blunt kind of way of being. Sure, you know? sure, straighten up. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I like that. Well, it's it, it gets to the point quicker. It certainly uh, it doesn't waste any time. Yeah, your mom had that. She's got that. She's yeah, got she's that. from Hell's Kitchen. She, she grew up. Yeah, uh, she's from 41st, New York. First, uh, forty forty first and first. Is or she something really like from that. Hell's yeah. Kitchen? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's awesome. scary, yeah. isn't it? Well, it's scary now. It can be, and I can I can honestly say it, at certain points uh, during my childhood, the kitchen was indeed hell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but there's Leave something. Your mother alone. There's something incredibly <laughs> satisfying. You know, and I've come by this. I I've inherited the trait. There's something incredibly satisfying about the sound of breaking glass. You know, you could be you could be in a fit of peak, and that. <laughs> We'll make it better. God, that's beautiful. It really yeah. does. It really does. And I, I, I'm sure there's some uh, reason, you know, in terms of physics for it must, that. In, it must trigger in your mind cha- change is inevitable. Oh, yes. Or the and and know, clean up yeah. <laughs> as well. And, and the tonight there'll be closure. For sure. Yeah. For a new kind of closure. Yes. No, I, gr- I grew up with that. Yeah. And uh, but you know what? It, that's the chaos element that we require in life for the later for and, and uh, stuff that we can draw on later on. Uh, you know, when it, when it's time to it's go to exciting. work. It's exciting. Yeah. You know, uh, there's nothing worse than somebody really, really boring. I'd rather much have your mom 
throw you know a platter of turkey at the wall. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so the beer round was something right. like eating. You want so some you more Chick Fil A? You were there that Christmas. Yeah, okay. yeah. I've been there. My grandmother once um, took the Christmas tree and threw it out the window. <gasps> out nice. the window. There's on a Christmas store like, morning. Um, but there's a story like that in my family too. It's uh, uh, I think it was my mother's father uh, that threw the Christmas tree out the second floor window uh, onto the stoop. <laughs> yeah, well, this is, we did this. They did this in front of me. Oh, fantastic. Was there uh, was there a good reason? Was she Jewish? <laughs> I think there was some of that going on. There was no, there was too many Christians in the room. You know, I, who knows? When you're a kid, I was I was just you know living in New York, and I and I re New York was used to be black. Right. Everything was so dirty in New York. It was it had not been cleaned in 50 years. And I just thought, this is, you know, I'm ripe for King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm exactly what King Kong wants. That's I it. mean, because I was seven. Sure. I, I'm delicious. Sure, he's going to come. <laughs> 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 exactly. Exactly. Isn't that a little presumptuous? And no, no, <laughs> no, no lock <laughs> window is going to keep no lock that windows. ape out. <laughs> <laughs> no lock windows to keep that oh, ape out. And I laid on the chenille bedspread. My parents left me in this hotel in New York when I was a kid. And I just basically waited <laughs> for that monkey, for that <laughs> monkey to come in and take me. Ah, still waiting. That <laughs> do you think that monkey's still out there, Taylor? <laughs> that monkey got me in 89, <laughs> <laughs> 87, uh, 2003. Again and again. Uh, the uh, <laughs> entertainment industry is in the family, I discovered, of late. Yes. Uh, you are related to a gentleman that we may remember from Three Dog Night. Yes, he's, 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 he's totally uh, amazing. Chuck Negron, who sang um, Joy to the World. Yes. And Easy to be Hard. And yes. And Pieces of April. Yes. And then... Um, wrote a book about um, his penis exploding and talked about it on Howard Stern. His penis actually wow. exploded. Exploded. <laughs> yes. I mean, I. Uh, d uh, it, it's in a book called Three Dog Nightmare. And my parents know more about my cousin exploding than I know about Negro History Month. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, there's too much information that I just don't want to know. I understand. And so a lot of it I don't know because I've chosen not to know. That's but 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 it's but I, I get. The <laughs> I get information um, because enough. people come up to me and go, "That Howard Stern really was the one." Um, did they? Jeez, uh, were they able to put it back together? I hope <laughs> they put it back together. I, I apparently had like, um, from what my mom said, uh -huh. uh, he had uh, intercourse twenty-seven times at, at, oh. at the Americana Hotel, and it broke, and that's why it exploded. <laughs> Holy <laughs> well, it, it fuck! Just broke. Yeah, that's is there some pharmaceutical help in that process? Because I think this is probably pre-pharmaceutical uh, help. Tw Twenty-seven times. In a row. Well, let's just in put it. I was in the tenth grade. I was very busy. <laughs> oh, shit, no idea. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh um, shit! At an early age, do you think? Uh, do you think? Do you think that gene sort of uh, traveled over? Did you? Did you feel like you wanted to be in the business of show? At, well, at you know point? what? I, I I talk about this in my show. I say, growing up in Southern California, you have there's two businesses: uh, show business and fruit. <laughs> and I chose fruit. <laughs> I, I thought, <laughs> wouldn't it be great to live in Ojai and wow, kind of like right. grab avocados and put them in a bag? And, and then go down to the street corner and, and sell them or, or just sell them like on Brothers and Sisters to like make $100 million just selling avocados to the Midwest. I see what you're saying. I thought that would be a great business. Genius. And But show business chose me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, was, I, I, it all happened rather accidentally because I was going to be an... I am a painter. And I, and I, and I did extra work to... Everybody stood still mm -hmm. when they were an extra, so you could draw them. So I thought that was a great job for me. And, and then, and then, and then things happened where I got ch li actually chosen from a crowd to be. Uh, uh, I got like a little bit of uh, action, you know. I had business, sure, in a in a movie, and I and I got a part. And they liked it, and the. the well, it was, yeah, it was the main event with Barbara Streisand. So I, I was able to say I just did the Streisand picture. <laughs> and I was yes. like, you know, 17. Perfect. <laughs> and people oh, were like, really? Wow, okay. Yeah, tell us about it. But, and then, believe it or not, I ended up in the end credits. But like nice. where they freeze when the song comes out. Oh, fantastic. Oh. So it was like a sign, and I went, okay, you know, I, could, I love Barbra Streisand. I love the Chinese theater. I love Junior Mints. <laughs> <laughs> so this do is I. my business. So I, and you get free I. coffee oh, and, a, and a breakfast true. burrito. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Have you ever put them in the freezer? Junior Mints? Where do you think they're... Oh, when I was a kid and a professional shoplifter, I used to freeze them before I stole them. <laughs> oh, you just put them behind like, I the I knew pea, there was a reason the frozen we vegetables. got along. I know, I know. But the, I, Fantastic. I'm, this is only because I'm a Chandler that I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> In the slums. Uh, so, so how did you, uh, what, was it, what, what was next after the main event? How do you follow the main oh, event? Oh, the main, how do you follow the main event is that I got involved uh, doing... Um, the LA Connection on on Venice Beach, doing improv and and like in a street street like a street person, mm -hmm. and we raised a crowd. I barked a crowd up. 
So I think it was like a memory of a past life that I was able to bark a crowd up like a Renaissance person. It was something you had never done before. Well, I did it at the Renaissance Fair. Right. When I used to do rope tricks. <laughs> rope tricks? I did these crazy rope tricks to raise money at the, you know, at the Renaissance Fair. I did rope tricks. How crazy is this? I was it, 11. It sounds dangerous. No, no, no. It was just to skeep money out of people. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, I was able to do barking up crowds, and then I barked the crowd up, and then I had help with the, you know, Corky Hubbard, the great midget. Who I performed with, he was you know vertically challenged. Right, and right. Him and I would bark a big crowd up. He later became your roommate. Um, uh, he became my roommate, and we lived together. Everything was very normal. But when you live with someone little, everything is a step <laughs> for them. So it's like every drawer is open. There's <laughs> footprints on the toaster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was very difficult. Oh, fantastic! And it was at this time uh, I understand that you were working uh, at, a, at a at a class. You were taking classes. How is it that you ended up uh, being able to spend a little time with Lucille Ball? Oh, with Lucille Ball, uh, I was uh, working at the Sherwood Oaks Experimental Film School as an intern, and then I got a job as a secretary, and then I got a job because I was such a good secretary. Because I, I I'm kind of like. I, kn I have a photographic memory, so I can do everything. Like, that's right there. That's right here. That's mm -hmm. right here. So I became the president's secretary. Very good. Which is a very big deal. It's hard to get any higher than that. I was in the office. I got to get free sandwiches, <laughs> and, and, I, and I got to be in you know, the, the deluxe life. Yeah. And then he would call up these movie stars and famous people, and Lucille Ball would have her eyes fixed at, uh, at the ophthalmologist in the building. And This is like, can you imagine that we live in a world? Right where movie stars went to Hollywood, right. and Lucy came there, and she uh, he kind of stalked her and got her uh, to do the show, to, to do it. And then he assigned me to be her assistant for the eight weeks. She was going to come in and teach a class. She for, taught a class. For eight weeks. Yeah. That's, uh, and w and did, she, was she, did she get paid for this? Was it, was it I think she got of? paid. We gave her Pogans and Scott <laughs> 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 And Paul Malls. Oh, unfiltered perfect. Paul Mall cigarettes. <laughs> perfect. And, and um, she was um, dear. And uh, very sweet, and I saw a side of her that probably other people didn't see because she, she uh, her friend had died that day, and mm. she was very sad. And uh, she, p I saw her gather it to kind of go forward and and put on this. It's a powerful moment. It was a very powerful moment. And then she was a, one of these things about when we lose our friends who are older, they're literally portals to another world. Mm. And like Alan Seuss, right. the great Alan Seuss just passed away, and he tells you about what happened previous. Right. And Lucy talked about how very difficult it was for beautiful young girls in Hollywood in the 1930s because they were, you know, victimized by, by horrible men. For sure, mm. for sure. There's uh, there's w w one of Taylor's uh, essays, of which there are several uh, that you can track down uh, on the internet. Uh, there's a passage from an essay called The Pink Gorilla about um, this experience with Lucille Ball that I'd, I'd just like, if you don't mind, I'd like to read just because I think it's, oh so yeah. it's, it's beautiful. This is uh, towards the end of, of, of the essay, um <coughs> and he's talking about uh, Lucy. He says, there's an old, whoops, I said that wrong. <laughs> There's a large old craftsman house on Laurel Canyon at Lookout Mountain Road. Since my Tuesdays with Lucy, every time I drive by there and see it, I think to myself that Lucy looked at that house when she was driving around the emptier, simpler Los Angeles of long ago, when she went to the studio to make the TV show that Carol Lombard had told her to do. That house is my link to the Hollywood that Lucy tried to tell us about. It's a link to her. Which is just... Um, it's beautiful, I, and yeah. you know now that's going to happen to me, my friend. I, I know which house you're talking about, and I, I see exactly what you're saying about yeah. um, the the portal. I just got such a chill. I th I think that oh, Lucy. Awesome. I always feel like Lucy's around in some bizarre way. Well, this I, is this is uh, yeah. she's she's welcome here on Chandler. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we should get her on Das Process. All you, are you, you know welcome. What, you, we should do the show. <laughs> you know what? But also, she was a very. Uh, she said, "You better know your lines. You better get it together. No fooling around." And Shirley Hemphill was in the, <laughs> in, the, in, the sh in the in the class, and Shirley Hemphill was like, I want a TV show and I want it now. <laughs> and Lucy was like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. Not the way it works. No, no, no. Although it seems as though times have changed such that uh, nowadays that might be how it works. It seems as though with uh, the so-called reality television, that's all you have to do is stomp Stamp loud enough, loud enough yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, people, yeah, yeah. people will pay you mind. We can't get distracted by reality TV. It's going to be a bleep, really. I mean, because In the big picture. Yeah, yeah. because people are going to go back to... Um, the real stuff. Well, it's the it's the it's the classics that are classics for a reason, and they speak to universality within us all. And I I don't think The Bachelor does. <laughs> no, I, no, I no, no, no. I, I mean, don't think uh, you know, Teen Mom films and <laughs> films and episodic <laughs> are where it's uh, it's I always been there. You know, it'll come back. I just saw a movie called Three Sixty with Jude Law, 
and it's probably going to come out in the next month. And it's uh, very, very beautiful and very oblique. And the performance is Anthony Hopkins does the AA guy. Perfect. He's a friend of Bill, right? Yeah. For a number of years? Yeah. Very famous friend of Bill. And he does he, the AA meeting, like Lost in Translation. He should get an Oscar. But that's the kind of stuff that's so transformative with art and, and, you know, when you see a movie. And you're not going to see it on The Bachelor. Right. And people are going to crave that. They're going to get hungry. Right. For yeah. That. The soul needs that. The it's, soul needs uh, that. It's, uh, it's, not getting, it's not getting much help from. Uh, it's going to be up to individuals like us. And, 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 and artists have a huge uh, responsibility to do that. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. And that's why Whitney Houston, when she died, that man that was her bodyguard, the real bodyguard, came out and said, we must treat performers better. It's a, it's a better idea. I mean, it's a good idea. The the uh, one of a, the guests that was earlier uh, we here earlier today was talking, uh, and I think quite eloquently about how this uh, this country, um, sociologically, has a real penchant for making the antihero, for building people up for the purpose of taking them down. And while there may be you know s uh, some classical sort of uh, Greek ways to look at that in terms of tragedy, it's it doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to be too healthy when it happens to the person. I in think real it's life. human nature, though. To Schadenfreude and all of that. I think that people really like the Romans and the, the lions. They they want to see bloodshed. They want to see this kind of warfare. Mm. And yeah. it's and mm. it's eat, sleep, mate, and defend. That's what it comes down yeah, to. Yeah, it's why there's things like fail blogs and all those you know memes of people falling off things and getting hit by things. Cause people like that shit. Mm. People I like think that thing. Negative. And shit. Yeah, it's like the people go that go on motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, like I I'm I I since I was a child I held the banister coming down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a banister holder myself. Oh, how about this? I was yeah. thinking the other day, like this whole culture is just about cartoon characters and caped characters mm. and superheroes and all of that. And when I was a kid, and now we're having this whole Batman thing again, and I was thinking, when I was a kid, they loved Batman. This is before you all were born. They had Batman on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And everybody would go watch it, and I never did. And my father said, why don't you want to watch it? And I said, because when they say the word Bam and pow, I think the font is too violent. I love you. <laughs> wow. I love you. I love you. Wow. That, yeah, and, you're, and you're right. You're absolutely I am right. right. You're absolutely right. I mean, you know, we've been. I'd rather you laughed at that. I, I thought what, that's a very a long way to go. It, it, what, what brought that, like, the font because is too I, violent? I just, <laughs> because I'm always trying to understand, like, when I was a kid, mm -hmm. I swear to God, I would lay in front of my house. It, it just in love with California and the sunshine and beauty and this, I would smell mint and ivy and I thought this planet's great and then all the kids were like Batman's on Batman's on and they'd go running in and then all of a sudden bam pow it was like I'm gonna go lay, the lay by the pool in the <laughs> yeah. Shaw's Long Smart. and wait for and wait for the monster. <laughs> I enough. know this is hard for Gomez's child, no, but no, I no, did no. wait for the monster. No, we're all in this together. Because the, 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 the Adams family was frightening. Sure. Thing <laughs> was horrifying. Yeah, and that's I, a and scary it, bit. Scary was scary. <laughs> but you know what? We needed it. We need to know about Thing. It's like we were talking about, you know, like Bewitched was the real thing. Genie was a whore. <laughs> <laughs> you heard those, it here. Those wow. through pants Genie. that wow. she was wearing. Oh, she was just like, hey, hello. And then Mr. Major Nelson should be in a trailer. <laughs> it's amazing. Taylor, you probably don't know this, but I, I played I played Genie's son on I Dream of Genie 15 <laughs> years later. <laughs> <laughs> so you go after my old man. <laughs> you go after you go TV after my, my television mother. <laughs> Fine. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to read some more of your essays. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. Well, what I did, I, I, I think the, the Genie offspring and her co-stars are royal. <laughs> <laughs> this is from uh, this is from an essay called California Gothic, and this is just a tiny little bit. It's 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 basically a punchline. No, this is absolutely great for me to hear. This is so, so important good. for me to hear. You can't be serious, you guys. Just the idea of facelifts is so insane. I say, look, the way I see it, when you get a facelift, you have two choices: Siegfried or Roy. <laughs> Is that, is that, I mean, is that, it's profound. That's, That's fucking absolute awesome. fucking truth. Yeah. There are really are those two options. Well, the joke, the thing I added to the joke is um, you only get two choices, Siegfried or Roy, and that's after the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the this okay. Great. Yeah, that's you not in there yet yeah, because I I, I I think that's such a uh, 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 an interesting uh, joke. Oh yes, 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 yes. Beca uh, because it's uh, uh, I feel bad for men who do that. Um, I I was you know I I 
I didn't realize that I had been rooting for the tiger for so long <laughs> until it happened. And then I thought, well, thank goodness that, that guy finally got in peace. <laughs> Those poor bastards. Yeah. Those poor tigers, they're stuck in that building in the middle of the desert behind a big thing you know, of plexiglass, and all they see is potential food. Walking back, they and saw forth. they saw a girl that looked like Cheryl Ladd. <laughs> <laughs> it was over, that was a good joke. and it was over. It was, was like, no, there's Cheryl Ladd. I think I'll go eat her. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that California Gothic is another beautiful essay uh, that is that is worth a look. And if you if you go to www.freshyarn.com, you'll be able to track it down. I don't know how old uh, the those the, are. The, wild. The, how old yeah, those essays no, are. Uh, there's also you, they could go to search me in the Huffington Post. Oh, very ever, good. Uh, That's fantastic. How long have you been uh, writing uh, f- uh, for them? Well, you know what? I, I started it out the day, day one. The w- when they started? Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, was a contributing editor really happily, and Ariana, and the, and the other guy are really, really nice. Yeah, she's a delight. I had the opportunity to meet her once or twice. She's she's good beans. And that she said that she talked to him, they talked about the spiritual enlightenment, <laughs> and that, 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 that you pay a happy price, and the culture <laughs> pays a happy great. price <laughs> by not doing it. She's great. That is Ariana Huffington. Yeah. That's amazing. I learned how to do it for uh, a, a show on Broadway. I, I, and then before I met her, I, I was able to do it. A well, uh, well, uh, show uh, that you wrote? No, no. It was a very, that famous, I forgot her wonderful name. She was the the, um, the teacher, uh, Anna Devere Smith. Oh, very good. Uh, and she gave me four uh, tapes to learn, and one of them was Ariana Huffington, and you listen to the tape a thousand times, and it goes in, in grain. So I'll always know that monologue. Uh, that's have you, funny. She, she have goes, you done that for Ariana? Have no, you? no, no, but no. The, the best line is she says, um, you know, that, that it's a spiritual it's a spiritual instinct, <laughs> and that you know, but it, it's gray. You know, you can't go up to somebody and hey, it's a good idea that you believe in God. <laughs> so good. unbelievable. She's unbelievable. She's, I've had the privilege. She's been on real time a few times. She's pretty great. She's funny. Yeah. She's yeah. yeah. I mean, she's she's the the new woman. You know, empowered that she kind of bursts through the women's movement in the glass ceiling, and now she's accomplishing stuff and, yeah. and leaving men in and in, you know in her wake. The, the, you know it's a great time for women right now. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, Happy to be one. Yeah. Honey, do I'm you agree? Is that, <laughs> is that right? Uh, she's, she's, she's getting a PhD over there. And no, I'm but it's, diffi- it's, d- it's <laughs> difficult for women, but it's also especially difficult for men because men are like playing catch-up big time. Which, I, you know, it's about fucking time. Yes. Uh, it, it God's honest truth. God's honest truth. You still do stand-up? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I really, really do. I've been... Really doing it. I've I've been doing it in Brooklyn, in New York, and okay. and and you know where the hipsters are, like all of you guys. And um, that's why you know I kind of found out who my fans are. My fans are very young, mm-hmm. very hip, open-minded, working out complex daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, a lot of you have never even been in a room with a man over forty. Oh, and, <laughs> and they get very. Sure. Straight it's up. interesting. It's almost like 19th century. They're yep. like, what, 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 what did he say? Charles Bouvier. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so I've been doing, uh, but this is just such a great. I was so inspired by Joan Rivers' documentary. Oh, it was fantastic. Oh, really? I haven't seen so it. So good. And you got to see it. It's so everybody's got to see it. It should have yeah. won the Oscar. It's just the most in- insightful look into that woman and how funny she is. She really is funny. She's she really funny. she said, uh, God, she there was something I read someplace uh, that really. Really, really made me laugh. It's uh, she. She just once, just once. She wants to hear of a Chinese couple that adopts um, a, a, a young gay, person. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. It's amazing. A Chinese couple that adopts the, a young gay kid. The way that she catalogs her material, everything written down in yeah. that. Yeah, it inspired like me. And, and I write every. I, I keep everything written yeah, down. And, I, and and the big thing is just to mem- memorize it and create a persona. And my persona, I think I've n- never neglected it. Mm-hmm. I've always thought it was so great to make people laugh and to laugh. And so to, and to be to be who you are. Yeah, and then and then do do the, do the work that's involved by uh, by the writing. That's the discipline that I have yet to accomplish. Uh, if I can share personally, is is to is to st- do you do you write every day? Yeah. Uh, and is there a, is there a specific set time that you do? I will write when routine? I'm about to have a complete and total nervous breakdown. <laughs> when, when it's <laughs> like time. if they could plot, I get so many phone calls, so many knocking on the doors, mm-hmm. so many begging and pleadings from the world, and I go, I can't take it. And, and I gotta have my life too. So then I just say, okay, that's it. Boom. And I will write today. I, today I wrote, um, uh, yeah, a story about uh, the wolves at the door. Do you uh, do you write uh, by by hand? Do you type stuff out? Do you do you do you both? Um, 
I write like Stephen Hawking with my tongue. Like, uh, <laughs> 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 no, I sit at a laptop and, right. and uh, you know, and, and, and I'm very, very good. I sit at a table and, and I do it. But then when it's and done, do it's it. done. Yeah, you don't. Uh, you you're, you're, you go back to the rest of your life. Uh, then I go back to my rest of my life, and I live my life, and I have the experiences of like being with my friend Christine here, who's going through the ordeal of Ramadan. Mm. Uh, you know, she just told me that she was uh, stuck on a glacier in Uzbekistan, her, where the helicopter country does tours, and there was a woman there, this you know, this horrible shrill woman that said as the plane is crashing um, or the helicopter is landing on a glacier. Has anyone seen the movie Alive? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, uh, I hate that guy. I, there's that always w- one. There's that always was, one. There is. There was that. Yeah, I was in, a, in an airport in St. Louis not too long ago and we, the flight was delayed and we were all waiting at the gate and uh, there was that one guy and this was the crazy thing is we were on uh, a very small little uh, Beechcraft uh, sort of 1900 thing and the guy had bought a bunch of food uh, to take onto the plane for a 35 minute flight. Which was the most... Re- and he, it was probably stinky food. The man. whole plane <laughs> How smelled... Weird. I know, smelled like chicken. And he, he had like four <laughs> or five bites, and then he put it under his seat, and then he got up out of his seat when he wasn't supposed to to go to the front of the plane, which made the single flight attendant think, oh, here we go. And he just wanted the guy to throw it away for him. Because I guess it smelled too bad sitting under his seat. But there is there is that one guy. There's always yep. that one guy that says that fucking thing you don't want to hurt said. Well, yeah. when usually people come up to me and if they recognize me, everybody's really nice. But sometimes somebody will be really dreary <laughs> and like say this insane things. And then I will just make believe that I have um, I just arrived from London. <laughs> you turn <laughs> you throw on the English well, accent. I, you know, I just get um, absolutely impossible. <laughs> And, but I, and, and I was guys now tell me where where did your father go to school? <laughs> <laughs> and then they they run away. Uh, yeah, so like like Tam. <laughs> <laughs> it was more. real nice <laughs> meeting you. <laughs> Hi, I just like when you tried to rape that <laughs> kid. <laughs> In your America, you got a real pretty mouth. <laughs> tell me about the one man show. The one man show has been very interesting because I work with a great guy called Logan Heftel, and we do um, music. He is this kid that I met and. He plays guitar and writes beautiful songs, and I was able to score the show like one scores a movie. Beautiful! Wow! So it's just so it's so fun to do because I can actually get more action from my back action when there's a chord played. Absolutely, there's something you, to that. You scored the entire thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow! So, but it's not that hard. It's like with with, with this story <laughs> that you just read about with Lucy. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it's like we did uh, Babalu in a minor key. Oh. Painful. It's painful. So when Lucy, Lucy has a th- you know a, a, a theme, you know, uh, Lucy, somebody asked Lucy, what was it like being the most famous woman of the 1950s? And Lucy said, I didn't know until the 60s. <laughs> 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 you know, Perfect. Because it's like you know when you're in the world, you yeah. know, there's no time. Right? Yeah. That's what. That's the great thing about being an artist and and being a writer. And and I always tell writers, you know, just th- just get dressed up and fool yourself that you're going to write. Exactly. For a while, I used to just get dressed up in really weird clothing and sit in the Four Seasons lobby and write. Oh, perfect. You know, d- d- just because I thought I was acting like a writer. Sure. Well, there's. I mean, there's uh, some. Uh, there's, a, there's a concept that I picked up. Uh, at a treatment center where they say you, you got to think, you got to th- act your way into right thinking. It sounds very similar to that. Like, you know, before you're ready to actually give up drinking, you got to act like you're ready to yeah. give up drinking. And yeah. then it'll help you get there. It sounds like the same thing. You sort of put yourself into the scenario of being a successful writer or just a yes. writer. Or just a writer. Just a I writer. Mean, just to get it down so it's, l- l- you know, people can read it. Yeah. Um, and you but, own it. And then you own it. But yeah, it, it, it's been very good. I have uh, these accomplishments that I have to do all the time. Like, I'm. Uh, uh, doing gay pride. I've never done anything like this in my life. They hoodwinked me. <laughs> doing this. I can't believe it. And I'm going to do it, but I don't like being hoodwinked. Um, it's gay pride in Las Vegas at the Tropicana. Beautiful. Wait, wait, what is this kerfuffle of Taylor Negronki being hoodwinked? hoodwinked? Well, I was hoodwinked into a marriage last month. What? Truly? On You're married f- now? On Facebook. Oh. On Facebook. It was unbelievable. Uh, congratulations. I was, was very, very busy. I, I like Facebook. I have a lot of friends. I learn so much from those people's posts, and I rely on them. And then I have my friends and these friend requests. And I always think, oh my God, these are so great. So I look at this one guy's friend request, and he says, I go to his, check him out, and he says that he works at Taylor Negron Land. Whoa. Pray tell. And I thought, 
I wonder if I could get a job. There. <laughs> <laughs> How much do they pay the health benefits? Is it Blue Cross? Do you get money? I'm like, seriously, if I could work at Taylor Negrin Land, maybe I could have a chance. What is TaylorNegrin.com? I mean, uh, t- uh, Taylor Negrin Land. I, I didn't stay there too much because I thought I'd smell plastic. I understand. <laughs> I understand. It was just weird enough, but kind of enchanting enough. And he looked like a, a nice looking, clean cut guy. And I thought he's just a, a great high end fan. Sure. How high? <laughs> well, I mean, I just thought he's not going to kill me. He lives okay, somewhere good. else. <laughs> he's, he's just, he should be part of Taylor Negron, m- my posts. <laughs> right. From you guys and see, g- witness my life, how I conduct my life. That's what Facebook is to me. A, a high example of what I wish people would think and what I aspire to be. I aspire to be my page. Mm-hmm. He sends me a friend request and I said, I'm going to approve him. And, I, and, I, and, I, and there's like a little heart on the friend request. And I said, he really likes me. <laughs> and I push it, and instantly on my Facebook page, it says, Taylor, Negron, and Jeff Loomis oh, are married. Shit. <laughs> he had it on there the whole time. And, oh, my God. And <laughs> this is what really got me. It was like, uh, I was like Don Knotts in Mayberry <laughs> Arbor. <I was> like, <laughs> 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 All of a sudden, it starts no, coming no, up no, like, no, no. Shit, like, like, no. like, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, congratulations, you guys. Uh, no. Taylor, no. you did it. No. Oh my God, Jeff, you're the luckiest guy in the world. Unbelievable. I may not like this. I'm just gonna continue eating Chick Fil A, um, Taylor. But if, oh my God, unreal. And you got I thought, these poor people. They got these poor suckers. They, that, they, their coolness and their loveliness was being exploited by Jeff Loomis. That is absolutely the the definition of modern day hoodwinked. It was modern. It was a, you know, and, and it was a celebrity marriage. It lasted <laughs> less than six minutes. I was like, I was like, I, I was writing like in live feed to, 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 to my <laughs> devoted five thousand friends. Yes. Somebody help me! <laughs> Defend my honor! Um, Get me out of this vile marriage! I'm dying. Did he did he eventually have to post a divorce that you? Well, got he, 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 yeah. he he sent me a message like, oh come on, you're a comedian. So you don't sh- take it so seriously. Right, you should get it. Ha ha, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny. You know mm. what? I'm a big. I've always been on your side. Yeah. So I printed that, and then everybody came to my honor, and then they ganged up on him. And then I have three trans- transgendered Facebook friends, <laughs> 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 and they got him. And it was all over, and that was that. And and and, but it was, but they were. I did get about 150 messages of goodwill. That's nice. That's and it nice. was very, very nice. down, yeah, it brings out... But uh, I do think that you don't ever want to exploit somebody for their good thing. I always find that sometimes odd situations like that will, you know, you know bring out some positivity. I got my, uh, a few years ago, but my account got, my uh, email got hijacked and sent out one of those Nigerian, like, I've been robbed and held up my family, gunpoint. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that wasn't real? <laughs> no, it I was sent you money, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, you sent to Nigeria money. Yeah, you sent it to a prince there. Long story short, I, I got a lot of emails from people I hadn't heard in a long time just checking in, like, okay, this smells really fishy, but let me check in. And it, it warmed my heart. It really fucking did. And, you know, I straight But in all this, out. N- in this new topography that we're in with the internet, we have new manners and new instincts that we Absolutely. have to take care of one another behind their screen. You can't. You <laughs> I feel like I walk the halls of CBS and I'll have earbuds in because I love music propels me. And um, if I see somebody, I'll I'll take a head, uh, an earbud out, and I feel like it's the modern day tipping of a hat, uh-huh. stopping and going, "Oh, good day." That's nice. I take hello, out the my earphone I and I'm like, mean, "Oh, I, hello." I, I think yeah. I th- when I walk into the gym, I I take it off like I'm taking off like a mink coat. <laughs> 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 oh, that's fantastic. Do you uh do you still uh, do you still actively seek acting work? Do do does is there a, a uh, do you get calls? Do you have to audition for stuff? Does that still exist? Yeah, of course, absolutely. That um, blows my mind. Yeah, I mean, there's auditioning, um, and then and then there's not a lot of auditioning, right? Which is could be bad, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I but I yeah yeah I, I I they call me up and I do these movies and they're really interesting and because I don't really have the I've done so many movies and I feel like I've had such a great time that I'm I, and I'm happy right now. Mm-hmm. Which is uh, more than anything. Uh, more than anything, I don't want to. I'm almost actually. They're offering me this movie right now, or they've offered me this movie, and I it looks like I'm going to do it, and it's the lead. Fantastic. Congratulations. And it's about fucking time. And and, and, yeah. and it's and it's one of these movies where. Um, 
I cry and I and I and it's a very heavy, very very big heavy part. And I was thinking, oh my god, oh, what am I getting nominated for an Academy Award? Yeah. Oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> they're gonna like call me and it's gonna be all over the film. I'm on. And it's like what? they should be so lucky. You you no, you'd brighten up. I know, the but place, I right? actually thought about that. Like you know, like what a hassle it would be like because you know you know that when you get nominated, that means like every text, every email, you might right. as well run for governor. Right. Yeah. Right. And what about that? Politics of any interest to you? Because no. uh, 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 your 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 father was my the father was in politics in in in, in California, and um, I've certainly known pol politicians, and I've been a part of that world. Um, my hat goes off to them, and you know, uh, they need to do that. It's in their their moral fiber. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. people who do that. And that's why you have to be very kind to them. No matter. Th I know this sounds horrible, but I mean, like that is the best that Mitt Romney can do. Mm -hmm. Wow. And and if you just uh, forgive him and stop making such a horrible, humane mess out of this, right. that's the best. We report the news, but we can't ridicule him. Well, that's uh, the, the the wheels are sort of off the wagon in the in the term in, in terms of journalism. I feel you know in the past uh, you know progressively over the past thirty five forty years in the last you know five or six maybe ten uh, things have gotten so far from what they used to be, and so it's not necessarily well. News it's all this. Everybody, we're all our newscasters now. We all have our own channel and. You know, it's so that's why it's important to really like we have to individually do the deepest thing, which is to enter the realms of deep thinking and do the right thing, Th whatever it is, to be informed, whether it's just to love, to forgive, you know, to bring you know a covered dish, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> them, them good old boys down south don't want none of that intellectual little thinking, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's, but you could just bring that. them on a big old chai of wings <laughs> and they'll like it. That's it. That's it. Then you just throw it in that burn pit because you know what? It'll burn. <laughs> Turn it around right burn. quick. No, isn't it? It's it's weird, isn't it? That um, and I, I'm this sounds elitist, but I'm because I've spent so much time in the South. So many when you hear that accent, you kind of get nervous. Sure. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And then if you uh, obviously, I'm sure you know, you spend enough time down there, and uh, th there are so many genuinely good people uh, that uh, you know it sort of takes a little bit of the onus off it. But it all it takes is that one angry, uh, misunderstood it's that same young one man guy from the plane know, that'll that'll bring it right back. Living in New York City has really tempered my soul because it's like living in Florence in the 14th century or something. Yeah. It, it really truly works. Mm -hmm. So many different types of people, and you get on that hot subway. And everybody's in the agreement that we're going to be in neutral space together. That's Except for the guys that are singing, begging for money. That 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 gets me. I I, I can't deal with. Not it. a fan, Rick. No. Oh, it's so horrible, isn't it? It's very <laughs> I had one guy well, that. It's just it's the incessant ones. It's not so much the guys that just kind of make a sweep. They go from one end to the other. It's the ones that stay there and like make you feel like a piece of shit for not giving them money when they suck. Yeah. So that's where you have to have steely eyes. But I did see one guy yeah. on Christmas Eve. He came through on the subway and did he goes, I'm gonna do a magic trick now. He had a lot of Edwardian authority. He said, I'm going to now do the trick and everybody looked at him and we're all galvanized by him and he pulled out a black hair out of a top hat. <laughs> 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 like a black rabbit. He pulled right out, and we were like, the whole subway. <gasps> <laughs> and then he got 20s. <laughs> 20s, he was just taking 20s. We all gave him 20s. Wow. He was like, you brought a hair I, onto the C train. I, I, I actually, I thought you meant for a moment H-A-I-R. Uh, yeah, 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 I was like, I mean, from his hat, I'm like, this I is the magic. You people. did a good job there. <laughs> is that, uh, is that, uh, that's a, it was a bit of a parlor trick yourself, eh? Well, yeah, because you know what it's like, because I love words, and I know that you do, and mm. it's, in, and also, let's appeal to each other's highest thinking amen doesn't it, yeah. it doesn't have to be like how many times does that nascar go around that much Ooh. i'm gonna turn left that's what's yeah. beautiful you there's no stickers here no one to tell us what to do no <laughs> yet, reason yet. to dumb it down well listen i'm 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 gonna be very happy to 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 you know pitch uh now they'll never hire well, us <laughs> but you know no no <laughs> don't say that don't say contract say you know they because the world truly does need a new a new Dialogue mm. instead instead of this aggressive kind of like Rush Limbaugh inspired even Bill Maher it's like stop it yeah, yeah it still yeah. gets it still gets a, a little people it, delivering their information like yelling at you forcing it yeah. on you and it's just I measure fun. like my radio by can I just fall asleep to it ah. yeah, absolutely wonderful yeah. I, I I I need to fall asleep to things and if it's uh, like if I do something audio visual audio always a documentary 
Oh, I know. Last night I watched. I could not sleep. I I had a, like I woke up at you. Know, you woke up at four o'clock in the morning, and you're like, I'm up. <laughs> right. This is that. I might as well just like start yep. doing disco moves. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, I can't. i got to stay in bed. So I got on Netflix, and I said, I'll watch a black and white movie. I ended up watching A Human Bondage Ooh. by Somerset Mom. And this it was my laptop. I didn't want it. So I had my face up against the screen <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> watching A Human Bondage. That's and I perfect. Thought, is this <laughs> how it ended That's up? That's it. Exactly. Right? <laughs> we are, they we are found him yes. watching Human Bondage with his eye <laughs> up against the screen. Oh, amazing. Amazing, but yeah, I'm doing stand up and and uh, trying to uh, uh, really kind of find out what's funny. And we're so polarized right now. We're continue every day. We get more and more. Mm -hmm. I love the Olympics. I hate the Olympics. Mm. And no, and he says, "Well, you really are a horrible idiot, you sissy right. faggot yeah. for liking them." Yeah. What? <laughs> no, it's it's I I, I spend of uh I, I I'm sort of in love with the comments on a lot of different websites and 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 it's a variety you know yeah. they they are they are uh, left they are right they are center they are they are straight it they are dissolves. gay they are, they are fun. every single it seems like every single one gets down to the very same argument you're wrong you're a prick you're a you're a no this, you're Obama that. should be out it Ding. always the, Ding. Be, the best one. I, the other day I said, you know, I really need to just come down and relax and watch Dick Van Dyke sing the Chimney Sweep song. Mm -hmm. I just need to get nice. my juju back. Uh -huh. So there I watch it and I start reading the comments. And it's like important. Someone is spreading vicious rumors about Glynis Johns. <laughs> It goes back me? a bit. <laughs> Liz Johns played the mother yeah. in, in Mary Poppins. Yeah, it goes back quite a bit. Yeah, and it's just like, you know, do not believe it. Th 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 these are the same people called Cinnabuster who said that Julie Andrews was a lesbian. Oh. Please do. And, it, and, it, and then it was like, fuck. You right. go to hell. Right. Goes right and you're there. watching like Chim Chimney. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like th that was what playing underneath it. I was yeah. reading it. There was th there was there was one um, in the movie Boom mm -hmm. that I watched yesterday. Richard Burton and, and uh, Tennessee Williams, the milk train doesn't stop here anymore. That it, it the, these two queens go at it in the in in the remarks, and one is <laughs> I don't mean to let it go. Clearly you have AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Wild. Oh, Clearly. Shit. Clearly you have AIDS. Oh, oh my no. goodness. You, you are a sick man. <laughs> Amazing. Who are dying of AIDS. You 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 think you know Elizabeth Taylor. Right. But you, clearly you're dying of AIDS. <laughs> clearly you're dying of AIDS. <laughs> it, 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 it was I don't know. Yelp is another one. Yeah, oh. the the that's the the website where you go to complain about somebody's business. Or you can love something. Yes. Or you can love something? Of course. That's shit. It's Democratic? That's no, no, good. no. It's like it's like I, I went to uh, North Motors on Echo Park Avenue, and they said, uh, "I found these people to be kind." Mm, beautiful. And I went, "Okay, that's uh, that's reasonable." I, I'm going there. Yeah. So we, d I drove the car over there, and uh, he said, "Do you know what's wrong with it?" And I said, um, "Well, I know I did vacuum the back seat." I don't know anything about cars, but they were very, very <laughs> kind. But, but there is that thing on Yelp. It's like a, a cakewalk meets a crystal meth orgy <laughs> of like what people are saying right. about, about you know, the, the yeah. Indian, the tandoori oven on Hyperion <laughs> is involved in Santeria. <laughs> <laughs> but get their non bread. It, yes, it's fabulous. It's fabulous. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's so fascinating. And I've had people when I leave the restaurant like, please go on Yelp. Yes, Do you love us? Yeah. Yeah. I will. You can get discount. If you put a bad review, people will like give you free shit to take it down. It's yeah, Amazon as well. You yeah. you write a flaming email and they'll just credit your account and let you keep the product. Huh? Typically, under today a I got amount. an email that said you are now part of a Netflix class action suit. You are eligible to be part and receive money from oh. Netflix. Oh, can I be too? Did I get one of those? <laughs> well, if you want to come over, I'll forward it to you. I don't know whether <laughs> I should do it. <laughs> like, what possibly is like you were you were late with the Ben Kingsley movie. <laughs> I want $25 right. million. Dollars. No. <laughs> I'm, I, I lost my potential on the House of Sand and Fog. I should have seen it on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Do you have you, so you, have, you, have, you haven't read it yet? That's just the... Well, the I, you know, yeah, I, I can't. I was trying to get, you know find Chandler. I was oh, like sure. very busy. <laughs> I'm very, very busy. Do I, you uh, do you have an iPhone? Do you do you read the emails on there? Are you up the iPhone? No, I have a BlackBerry, and 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 and, and I get all the emails. And um, you know, it's, we're living in a time that's very, very difficult because we we don't have dream time. We don't have 
Right. It's all Dr- daydream time. It's all there. It's all there. Something occurred to me on the drive, uh, trying to find Chandler myself uh, today. I there was a was coming down a barham and right where it hits Forest Lawn, and there was a girl. Uh, furiously, uh, well, I don't know about f- she was walking hilariously <laughs> with <laughs> with, uh, with her phone and uh, texting and typing and uh, you know uh, thumbs akimbo and uh, I don't know that's not akimbo that's akimbo a blaze. so thumbs whatever yeah blaze and uh, and I suddenly realized oh she's she's connecting to somebody she just she's there's somebody yeah. on the other end of that thing she wants to be connected to and and uh, and that's I mean that's all any one of us really want is to be connected with people and I so a man got out of the cab on 79th street and west end avenue and he came out and he was hunched over and he he said i can't on the phone i can't i just don't have any energy left i'm cracked i need no one will help me and i went to him and i said i'll help you oh. and he went <laughs> oh jeez be off I with you like, oh my <laughs> god i i can't believe it i'm not like an insect <laughs> I felt like I was like a a, a, a fruit fly. Unbelievable. Here you go to help somebody. Yeah, it's like I'll help you, and he would no, no, no. So, so there's no connection. Yeah. There's no connection. Connection. Yeah. So whatever connection it is, you know, uh, how do you make it? You know, it's like at the store in in New York, these Africans, you know, from the Ivory Coast with those eyes, mm. and they work all night, and I go in there, and I'm. They never talk to me, even though they see me every night, and then. I say, I, I'll say, like, what's your favorite bread? <laughs> so I start doing their accent. What's your favorite bread here? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Tell me. I go, do you like the raisin bread? <laughs> They're like, no, we're not allowed to eat the bread. I go, I'm going to buy you bread. <laughs> so I go and I buy bread and I give it to her. It just needs to cost me five bucks, but I get to make a friend. There you go. Nice. And it's like anything to crack it. Now when they see me, they're like, oh, I've been eating my bread. I eat this <laughs> bread. I eat this bread. <laughs> you know, so it's like kind of a yes and. You, yeah, yeah. You make that connection. And, and I don't know why people are like so like tight right now. I'm sure there's a lot of decent reasons. I, 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 I know this box and these little boxes and yeah. that box. I know, I know that, that even though it, it pertains uh, or pretends or it proclaims itself connecting us, uh, in some ways yeah. we get in our own little world when yeah. we're staring at that thing. See, it's one thing to see somebody you know walking feverishly, texting, connecting to the world, and someone sitting at a table filled with people and friends. On that the, same yeah. thing, it's like right. They're missing. You're when I, when I was a young actor in New York, and I lived, you went out. You didn't have a cell phone, right? So you were like, God, I, I hope they're going to be in Washington Square <laughs> Park. <laughs> I, I'm going. <laughs> it's going to be uh, a and, lonely, and, and, drunken uh, night. Yeah, I mean, and then you're and then you go looking, and you're running through bars, and you and then you find them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that was part of the fun. And who did you meet? And it's like people would go yeah. like, Well, you stay with us. I didn't come. I didn't find you. I, I ended up there. Right, That's right, true. Right. And that m- mist- and then you great seductions. Do you think that we'll uh, return to a land like that? Yeah, when they blow up all the you know the space stations, <laughs> yeah, you know, no, like <laughs> when all that stuff goes off. It's the the uh, coronal mass ejections. It's the uh, it's yep. the suns. Uh, the is that what they were? Sunspots. Sunspots. Yep. Sun mm-hmm. I right. think that's the thing that takes the computers down, right? I mean, isn't corona that what mass ejections. Right. Corona. So yeah, do coronal the people of Corona know <laughs> about that? <laughs> <laughs> They're out of there. <laughs> that's. No, I think uh, that's pretty much what they've been doing. There's been a lot of mass ejections in Corona. Yeah, there's a lot of babies down there. Better get up there. You got a big problem. <laughs> a lot of a lot of Hispanics <laughs> breeding down there. <laughs> oh, Bless shit. you. Uh, do you remember the last time we saw each other before today? At uh, Kate Manalini's? Uh No, damn. It might have been no. I think it was. Uh, well, there were two days in a row. It was a funny thing. It was uh, it was Drew Barrymore's birthday party. Mm-hmm. Uh, up at her f- uh, her f- friend and producing yeah, partner yeah, Nancy's yeah, house, yeah. and then the next day, or maybe two days later, because the next day I don't really think I was conscious. Uh, that two days later, uh, you were walking down Oakwood. Uh, uh, just uh, east of Fairfax, and I pulled over to say, "Oh my God, it was so good to see you two nights before," which was uh, fun. That party was a good time. That was a good party. That was uh, 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 she's very sweet. I have a joke about that. Like I was walking on Oakwood Street when I used to live on Oakwood Street with Cynthia Segetti, the old Jews. When the old Jewish lady comes out and she goes, "My." My pussy got run over on Oakwood Street. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it happens. And every time I say Oakland, too, they go, my pussy. My pussy. pussy. No, <laughs> no, people drive too fast. Yeah, they, uh. <laughs> on my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Why so fast on the pussy? Why oh, so cute on no. the pussy? <laughs> it's so fluffy. <laughs> Did we see each other at Kay Manalini's then as well? I well, wonder. I don't know. I, uh, Do you, I remember. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I think you patronized we were there. Was that like, place? Well, I was there and your mom was there. And, oh. and, and we, uh, yes. we had a reunion. You know, yes, I, yes. I love your mother on many, many levels. And we had such a and serious bond together on that weird moment in time on Hell to the Chief. Right. But I, I did learn something from her that, that I have applied. Teach me. Well, I remember that they did a network run through and she said, we're not ready for this. And we're not ready. We're not ready. And you're here to watch. I mean, and she kind of kicked them out. Kicked the network out? In a way, yeah. Wow. I mean, or, or, or she put them in their Moxie. place and they didn't leave. I think they had to like lay on the roof. Oh, that's <laughs> but but, it, but it, she did put them in the place. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Because you know what? You come to, you know, it's, it's, it's that horrible divide. And she's from that world. And I'm from that world, too. When you wanted to make the director happy and you were a kid and you just wanted to like go smiling and. That's uh, th- that's sort of the world that I, that, I, that I find myself in. And you in too, you working, were on those working TV as well. Shows but too. there's this there's this experience that I have sometimes that I'm working where <clears throat> I'm trying to please the director, but then I there's part of me that's thinking, mm, boy, that's really not the where the camera should be. Mm. Yeah, I never I I never ever knew where the camera should be, uh, and but I did know where the sentiment should be. Okay, uh, similar uh, similar uh, association. Yeah, where I would be like, this is not cool what you're doing. Right, you're giving me the wrong. Yeah, the and wrong as as notes. a human being, this is just sick. Yeah, and 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 that's what TV was. That's why I never really did that good on TV. But when I was on TV, I stood out because I was like doing it on my own. Sure, sure. Do and you have a uh, a favorite television experience? Well, I just remember being on Friends and thinking actors can do really well hmm. because they had. Um, craft service from five star restaurants every two hours <laughs> wow. and, and, and I, I never saw you know Spago bring in so many hot buns wow. <laughs> this wow. is in the probably the sixth or seventh season of that show when they were uh, really <laughs> yeah. in full stride I mean that's a horrible observation about TV <laughs> but, like, but Carrie Snow the great comedian mm-hmm. said you know, she was in an acting class and the actor he said a lot of you actors you know you come here and all you want you know is the big house in the hills but you don't want to put on the work mm. and Carrie said I also want a pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. You know, so uh, so you gotta Brilliant. you gotta say it. Brilliant. Are um, you familiar, Dan? Oh, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up with all this TV Please and all this. I, I have to geek out. Nothing but trouble. It's such a fantastic performance and such a good movie. What was it like? What it's just, you, I have it's to weird fawn. to me that even, even anyone even saw it. It's it's a lot of people. It got past a lot of people. But tell it is tell the people who don't know what it a is. Good movie. Okay, <laughs> I mean seriously, got, you no, don't know he what went through a lot of trouble. To Chevy, Chevy Chase. You've got Demi Moore. You've got John Candy. John Candy. Um, I, I know. And I'm, Danny. And yeah, and Danny. Uh, a couple. Right. Yeah, a couple times over, he plays yeah, what yeah. three roles. Yeah. This is a movie that was uh, that, that Dan Aykroyd came up with. And I think that it's like a fever dream mm. that was so insane. It was the first time I ever really was smelt it, a crack pipe. <laughs> was it? It was him and his brother that wrote it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was you know this really dark, dark, dark movie about excess in the nineties. Interesting. And it was very, very, uh, very dramatic because Demi Moore and, and Chevy got into the worst fight ever. Oof! I can't imagine uh, being in a fight with Chevy Chase being any fun whatsoever. And but I don't even know this. I more. was in the middle of it, and Oof. they and they released me. Because I, and I, my parents used to fight and have terrible things and break sure. China and stuff. So when the fighting happened, they, uh, the Chevy and Demi were like really at it. And then they said, Taylor, you can go home. And I remember going home in my costume. Oh. Which was like an orange pantsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Some loud <laughs> with, a co- with a cobra pin. <laughs> and, uh, and I drove home. And then, and then I was like in my garden thinking, this is like what Boris Karloff went through. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like in, in orange makeup. There yes, I am. Yes. That, that was right. Oh, my God. That's the scene I was just talking about. Oh, beautiful. They got into a horrible fight. And he, you know, he said, you apologize to me. And she said, I wouldn't apologize to you, you goddamn turd shit. <laughs> and, and, and then, then here you go. But That's it was a, a great uh, honor to see uh, Dan Aykroyd's brain. Oh, I can't imagine. He was so good in that. Uh, how, a lot of improving when he's like the judge. He's sitting yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of improvising, but also you know uh, that whole movie was improvised. We actually took uh, the ending, all the grips, uh, wrote it in a, put it in a hat. And a hat. Are you kidding? Oh, no. Amazing. 
That's m- so everybody just chose the ending. Oh well, how- Simon says that he should just go through the wall. Who won? Because it was a good ending. When he goes through the wall, you- that was like it was a Warner Brothers movie. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. I think but that's that's my favorite scene right there. Yeah, it's uh, it's very <laughs> it's very interesting. Uh, uh, the, the darkness and um, how. Uh, that movie was I don't know Tupac Shakur was on that movie yeah. and Digital uh, Underground yeah came and in. when Tupac Shakur died um, I thought I died mm. because I was in the video that they played interesting of all the world plays the same song That's That's a, yeah that got um, me into Digital Underground and, and into into hip hop music uh, watching that movie it's really interesting it's uh, the juxtaposition of that movie with what it's saying, but then the comedy and your well, performance. I feel like the Abraham the Lincoln of hip hop right now. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of are. <laughs> there's something about the dark, though. There's something about the dark that, um, well, there's, uh, if I can go back to an, uh, another passage from The Pink Gorilla, one of uh, Taylor's uh, essays. The one on Lucy. The one on Lucy. Yeah, Lucy was a realist who made the world a happier place to be in because she mocked the sadness in life. She was brilliant in the dark of her own silence, and in being so, she made the world laugh. She had courage to create hilarity from darkness. Wow. And it's, it's, it's that. It's that, dark, it's that dark, dark stuff from which springs. Yeah. Well, Chaplin. Bing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Dan Aykroyd. All, you know, all, uh, Tina Kubrick. Fey. All those people have, have, have a darkness. And you know, now they go, oh, are, is it? Somebody said, do you have to be insane to be a star? Mm. You know, like Angelina Jolie and, and Lindsay are these new crops of people insane. I think that most stars are kind of insane. Uh, yeah, I don't think you have to, but it helps. It yeah. really, really, really <laughs> helps a lot that you can that you can go blank and and to and to handle uh, what happens to your world. I mean, because you know, for for as, for as much as as, as you uh, would get, may get recognized for as much as uh, you know, I, I occasionally people say, "Oh, you were in that thing." You know, there's another level that my my brother experiences, and and people recognize him a great a great deal. And for people, uh, you know, that go to that other stratosphere. Man, your whole your whole shit is different. Yeah. You don't you don't have a you don't have what was your life anymore. Gosh, I'm no no no. It's a back. no. There's it a passage in another one of your essays that I wanted to uh, is all this I wanted to hit on. I if feel you don't like mind, all this should writing a book. Yeah, they just offered me a book deal, and Fantastic. I'm putting and I really am Good. doing, and I'm putting yeah. it together, and Good. it's and it's really really interesting because when you write when you write, the reward is you learn about yourself. And that's a life examined, and then you come away with a, a treasure. Yeah, it's, it's you know you get to own your life and and let go of the dreams that you had and accept we well, you know what's here. Yeah, and 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 being an artist lets you do that. It's a p- real privilege to, to to get to be an artist. And my parents were so nice to me. I always that's why I think artists have to be really encouraged. If you have children or the ones around you, encourage them and be nice to them. Yeah. Just don't put them in a beauty pageant. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> you know? oh, that's rich. That is rich. Sometimes, you know what I say? Like one day, w- one day when I was just with my assistant and I, a, a really bad day was happening and I just w- had a baby attack and I threw myself on the couch and I said, I just feel like Jean Benet but without the cowboy hat. <laughs> 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 I said that. Uh, that's <clears throat> awesome. <laughs> Are you familiar at all with a television show called Inside the Actor's Studio? Yeah, this I know, yeah. Are you familiar at all? With the way the eminent, the preeminent, the post-eminent, Mr. Lipton, finishes his show. Yeah. Um, now I'm sure you might enjoy this story, Actually, and you may have been a part of this t- story. T- Mr. You would, you would you probably may have been at this party. These sons of bitches, they they get me because to tell this story. <laughs> he tries every, to every get out of episode. this every time. <laughs> right. But this the story. Uh, there's a Is story. This is Drew Barrymore's wedding? Uh, no, Better. no, no, no. I had the uh, I had the great good fortune in the year 2002 to work with an actress named Nina Foch. Nina Foch was playing the grandmother in a motion picture uh, where uh, Mandy Moore was the granddaughter and I was the brother-in-law or something like that. And uh, one night, uh, <coughs> I was watching uh, inside the actor's studio and enjoying it uh, there at the Sutton Place. Got into the van the next morning to go to work. Uh, Nina Foch was sitting in the front seat, uh, and Mary Catherine Garrison and I were sitting in the back talking all kinds of shit about James Lipton and inside the actor's studio, saying, ah, oh, he's a this, he's a that, he's a that, he's a thing, you know. And from the front, Nina Foch turns around and says, uh, you know, I was married to him. <laughs> 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 to which I say, uh, no, uh, I didn't until just now. 
And uh, then she goes on to say really lovely things about him. Uh, and I felt like a heel for the rest of uh, the shoot. And then <coughs> the following year, my, my brother was, uh, he was in a movie called The Lord of the Rings. The Lord of the Rings won every Academy Award they ever invented. Uh, some they invented for The Lord <laughs> of the Rings. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, I got a phone call from an old friend uh, who said, dude, call your brother. We're going to the Vanity Fair party. And I, and I was already three sheets. I said, ah, he goes, do it. So I called my brother, said, hey, can we go to the Vanity Fair party? <laughs> ended up in the limousine, ended up walking into the Vanity Fair party, much to my brother's publicist's chagrin. <laughs> and uh, there I was, like all of a sudden, you know, stepping out of Steven Spielberg's way and bumping into Destin Hoffman. It was just, you know, that, that thing is crazy. Yeah. That, that party is nuts. And uh, I'm trying to catch a breath. I talked to a... Uh, a, a waiter there for a second because I feel like he and I could relate <laughs> on uh, certain things and uh, then I look over and I see James Lipton and I think oh Your chance. I got it I got yeah. it he's standing by himself he's looking down at, at a piece of paper and I think I, I got I got this and I sidle over him and I say <clears throat> I'm sorry Mr. Lipton I so really, so my, uh, Mac Aston, I'm an actor, whatever. I love your show. Your show's fantastic. It's really wonderful. And last year, I had I had the good fortune to work with an actress named Mina Foch, and she was just delightful, and she said lovely things about you. And I thought, you know, he was going to say, hey, kid, uh, put you in a movie or whatever. You know, you're the, what, the nicest thing you've ever said to me, or, you know, all these things. He turns to me, and he looks, and he says, do you have a pen? To which I said, hold on just a second. <laughs> <laughs> I ran to talk to the waiter, and I said, hey, can I have a pen, man? i got to give it to James Lipton. Got the pen and gave it to him and walked away. I don't know what happened <laughs> there. I don't know if I... Well, well you, know, you know why my mouth is hanging open? Because <laughs> I just sold Nina Foch's house. What? <laughs> what? And I, what? Live, I lived oh. in Nina Foch's house for 17 years. Are you kidding? Thank you, I'm universe. Kidding. That's I'm not kidding. Well, hell? do you have a pen? <laughs> 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 no, but it's 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 it, this house is a very big deal to me, and wow. I let, I finally let it go because I let go of that path. I had a, I got what I wanted out of my life, so I don't have to live in Nina Foch's house, which is Judy Garland's house. Which wow. Is Diane wow. Keaton lived there. It's just, it's just filled with those memories, but it was always Nina's house. And I called it Nina's house. Amazing. And John Carlyle was friends with Nina Foch and lived across the street. And she said that she put the cunt into Capra. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fact. And that's a fact. That is a fact. And that, uh, 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 that I know more about Nina Foch than I do Negro history. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it's so interesting that you would bring up Nina Foch. I and I did not know that she was married to, to Lipton. Which was blow away, uh, you know. In the in the I believe in the fifties is when is when this marriage wow. uh, took place. She insisted back in two thousand two, God rest her soul, uh, that uh, even at that point in time, uh, James Lipton was not dying his beard. <laughs> well, you know what? You never know. He he probably wanted a pen. I thought you were going to say like. Um, he was going to write to you, well, boy. That, don't ever bring up I, Nina's name to me again. I, you know, I, 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 maybe I blew it. Maybe I blew it by by running away. But I well, got you the could never do that again. I got the distinct impression from him when when he asked the question that 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 was the only purpose I would serve in his life. Yeah, uh, was to, you was can to never go up to say, you cannot uh, you can't go to a girl and say you're pregnant. <laughs> 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 you can't go up to a guy and go hey so how's your wife. <sighs> So, uh, no, so I have I have stolen mightily from oh, him, good, okay, good, and he it. has stolen mightily <laughs> from Bernard Pivot, and so Bernard uh, Pivot from Bernard yeah. Pivot, yeah. and so uh, we here on Das Process like to round it out with questions ten, what I like to call Lipton's shtick. What is your favorite word? Possibility. I really do this. It's it's a great word. What is your least favorite word? Cancer. Oof. Mm. To be honest. Yeah. You now you put them together and mm. you get the possibility of cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. The favorite. <laughs> the favorite. <laughs> See, I, yeah. What we're doing is we're, we're getting laughter. <laughs> we're getting laughter out of going down the realms yes. of deep thinking. Yeah. I'm being yeah. very honest it's with true. you. It's no. true. I'm very old. I'm double nickels. <laughs> I, I, I can't. You know, long Gotta be honest. Double nickels. At this point. Uh -huh. Okay. Give me the third word. What turns you on? Anything under a red light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Sure. You know, it's like that Woody Allen thing. I got my little what, light bulb here, <laughs> and which is very easy. I, 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 that's why I travel with a red light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, what turns you off? Um, you know, endless chattering. You know, and, and kind of like ridiculous 
redundant things mm -hmm. in my mm -hmm. cell phone going on. Oh, fair enough. What sound or noise? Hold, hold on for one. That's it. That's sound or noise. That is Do a very great noise. It's very soothing. That's my ring. Is that, uh, that's, uh, is, uh, I want to know if that one's available on my phone. I like that a lot. It yeah, it's called, um, I think, uh, Crying Cricket. Really? Uh, that's what I call it. But it, it ends <laughs> there. It's gorgeous. I, I, the phone ringing really makes me nuts. Oh, well, so, okay. Wait, there was a, what sound and noise do you love? That's Sorry. how it starts. Oh, this, this, the sound that I love is probably, you know, that sound of popping bolognese sauce. Oh. When you're making spaghetti yeah, and yeah. it's like, mm -hmm. it pops and you're yeah. like, oh. It's tough. And that little smells in there. It's getting good. What sound and noise do you hate? Um, the reason I moved out of Los Angeles, which is uh, leaf blowers. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I, oh. And, and I, think I just can't believe um, that they exist. I think they're illegal in After my own. Yeah. Well, Th I mean, there are many of us. It's so awful that, that we is. allow this. You know, twenty-five percent of all pollution comes from gardening tools. They're, they're, they're ruining the topsoil, and, and we're where's fighting. Where's it going to go? Where's it going to go? Where's it going to go? What are you doing? You got a little three uh, cc engine, and you're on yeah. the earth. Where are, you gonna, where are these leaves going to go? As long as I can't <laughs> see it, it doesn't matter. But, 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 but we allow it, and uh, we're all, uh, all unindicted co-conspirators. Mm. I'm, I'm not. So I talk about it every internal time combustion, internal combustion. Yeah, for oil combustion. that uh, under specious ways do we acquire that oil? Mm -hmm. To blow it to for, to a magnolia, a magnolia leaf. What did a magnolia <laughs> leaf ever do to you? <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite curse word? Um, I think God's name in vain. Sure. You just like Jesus. Christ. I, but I take a long time to say it out of respect. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you must be joking. Uh, I say that. It's that's a not, that's a, I don't really cuss. I'm from Pasadena. We don't do that. Oh. But, <laughs> I, but I do like say, Jesus Christ, I can't believe you said now that. Or, like, or what the H L H E double L two things. People will really go, what? And they, wow. the other thing that I've been doing now recently, and because of my friend Barbara Steele, I'll say, well, you got to come to New York because I've got the grooviest little apartment. <laughs> Groovy. Yeah, just the minute you yes. hear groove, yes. you relax. Anything with two O's in the middle is yeah. a good yeah. word. Ooh. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what profession, other than your own, would you like to attempt? I'd like to be the art curator at, 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 at a good museum. You know, All like right. the Met or an old, like the Frick. And, you know, b buy little, little paintings. This is a, a wonderful idea. Yeah. You Can know. you make that happen? Can you that know, just happen? You know, it could just happen. Let's make that happen. I, I had a tour b by somebody th that does that at the Met the other day, and, but you need to be very brusque and very, um, mm. uh, very uh, cunty. Wow. If, if, yeah. if you, in all seriousness, if you had the opportunity <coughs> to curate something, you know, if you were invited to. The oh, absolutely, 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 absolutely. You know, I, I'm a painter. I have a show going right now. and uh, Is that your artwork on your website? Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. That's the okay. Where can people find your artwork? Right now, the paintings are at a, a gallery in in the valley called Two Roads Gallery. I have seven paintings there that I just did that are really very pretty and very beautiful. Two Roads. Two Roads on Tahunga near Aroma. I did it with Eve Branstein. Fantastic. We're having a. You guys should all come on the twelfth. We're doing um, a, a, a poetry, a spoken oh, word yes, event please, right. with yes, music, please. and then you, you you get to see the paintings on the wall, and, and they're and they're very beautiful. It was very interesting, you know, because it's what I love the most in my life is being able to paint, and people's reactions to it are just stunning. And if people don't have the privilege to be in Los Angeles online, they're on your website. They can. They're find on my all website. Your, yeah. All your writing and. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, art. it's like yeah, it's going to be rebooted. The new. Uh, website will go up next 2. week. 2.0, yes. <coughs> what uh, profession would you not like to do? Mm, I wouldn't want to be a doctor. Fair enough. I would hate to, like, say um, anything to, uh, you know. Sure. You have? My cancer. friend was just telling me that um, uh, this woman was tattooed and the OBYGN um, had to go down there and, and the tattoo was <sighs> right where the they're going to have to make the incision. Right. And the tattoo said, uh, fuck me. <laughs> 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 so they had to go in and actually cut where it said, fuck me. Oh, unbelievable. It's a, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. <laughs> or no, it usually takes two people to fulfill that one. I, I hope that you don't have fuck me on your nope. vagina. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, not on your I have vagina. enjoy me on my <laughs> penis. I mean on your vulva or whatever it's called. I have enjoy me on my Volvo. <laughs> Question number 10. If heaven exists... 
What would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Well, it looks like you had a blast. Oh, perfect. <laughs> nice. Absolutely perfect. Is that good? I think that's that, That'd be very, very good. It yeah. looks like you had a blast. That's exactly yeah. what you, you, you want to hear. Yeah, because you know what? I, I, I feel like Susan Tyrell, you know, Susan Tyrell, may she rest in peace, just when we, we had a memorial, she died. And she wrote, the last thing she wrote, she said, I came back here for me. Oh, this was for me. Beautiful. And all the pleasure and the displeasure was mine. And I think that is amazing. Absolutely. So I hope I can do that, you know, and God, or, or God will say, did you shoplift Junior Mints at Albertsons? <laughs> 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 can you imagine? No, you're going to hell. You're going, you're going in a cage. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> boom, it was the Junior Mints. Um, <laughs> Taylor, thank you, you froze them. so much for joining us today. Yeah, that was that awesome. That has been a real thank pleasure. You. Um, <clears throat> you, can, uh, well, uh, you can check out the art at uh, Two Roads Gallery here yeah. in Los Angeles. That's and on we'll Tahunga, is that right? Tahunga uh, Avenue, yeah. We'll report report back, Two Roads uh, Gallery. Uh, Two Roads we'll Gallery. We'll There's report back how the 12th went because uh, now I'm excited. Yes, indeed. Uh, and look for me in New York because I have I have a, a play I directed called uh, Who Loves You Baby at the Soho Playhouse. Oh, fantastic. That's going on right now? Yeah, it's, it's been going on a year now. Oh, wonderful. That's a good long time. Yeah. That's uh, and then and then I have my show will go in New York in the fall. It's called The Mayan Countdown. The Mayan Countdown? Yeah, we only have like 140 days left. Yes. Wow, but who's counting? Tip oh, no, you're counting. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm counting <laughs> and I'm charging 40 bucks a ticket. <laughs> That's a way to do it. Um, uh, my name is Mac Aston and you've been listening to Das Process. Oh. This has been fun. I'm Dan Levy. Another great episode. Fun in the uh, studio. Yeah, Rick Larder here. I had a blast. Mike Fitzolo. And, and Colin. I'm Colin Brandon. Crump, oh, who Colin. doesn't have a bike. Thank you so much, Taylor. That was great yeah. fun. Thank man. you. It's a real yeah. pleasure. Don't forget the Alamo. Uh, that was good. Wow, that was surprising. Well, I just ha have to tell you, you know, I'm very modest about, I'm very quiet about what I do. I don't really, I don't, go, when I go to red carpet events, I say, can I please go in there? <laughs> but for you to read my work like that was so flattering. Oh. And to hear what you just read back to me, knowing that's never happened to me. Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. That's beautiful stuff. There's one, there's, there's a passage. It's never happened to me before where I, he was reading and I was like going, I get it, I guess it is real. I did that. I did that. You know, there's one piece that on the Huffington Post about um, Keith Ledger. Okay, copy that. That, that. I think that he was particularly like about when Keith Ledger, because uh, I talked about Nina Post. Could you believe Nina? What a time so That's ridiculous. And so Nina, Nina was a real piece of work. Oh, she was. So you met her? Oh, yeah. We worked together. And you were in scenes with her? Uh, a couple of the dinner table scenes. And uh, she played the matriarch at the time? Yeah, yeah. Was she nice? She was. She would get a little frustrated uh, with the way things were done, yeah. but uh, she was also game to play uh, you know, Alice and Janie, mm -hmm. and Janie uh, is, is a light, and so uh, you know, she, she, she got along, those two got along. Well, you know, once I was, when I had my TV show on NBC, it was on at 8.30 on Saturday nights, Hope and Glory and Bell and And we were at one of these Hollywood parties in the backyard, and this man goes, so what do you think that uh, Mad About You is the lead-in? you sure, Taylor, isn't that great that Mad About You is the lead-in? I don't know how it's horrible. I hate that show. I hate, I hate my eyes even watching it, because no way is Helen Hunt ever going to be married to Paul. It would just never happen. She just seems to just quite the floor with it. And he said, I produced that show. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what I meant to say is I love it. <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 I love it. I, 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 but, but, but I do love it. No, you have to be so careful. <laughs> I was being sarcastic. <laughs> what I <laughs> meant. <laughs> because you, you have to be because... Uh. Thanks but for um, no, that was really, really fun and very flattering. Yeah, good. yeah, yeah. thank you. It's, um, yeah, you're a joy to talk to. And, and what better way to say 